And here we are in the year 2023, and we've, we've got Team 2 coming up right now. And we've got Andy and his team, who are going to amaze the world of YouTube, if this, of course, makes it onto YouTube. I'm sure it will. It is the 6th of January, 2023. And um, Andy, as soon as I hear your voice, my friend, I will start the timer. Good luck all. Good luck. Right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Room to Construct. My name is Andy Garrity, and I'll be managing this project. Right, there will be ample time for questions following our little presentations. Please sit back and let myself and the site team take you through the project. A little bit about myself. I started on the tools nearly 40 years ago now, and I've worked my way up, and have now been managing construction sites for the last 18 years. So... Welcome to the project. We'll be working on the construction of six brick and block houses in Bramley Close. The site is bounded to the south and east by existing properties that are occupied currently. And there is a school to the north who will share a, a boundary with the school program. Program wise, we're going to be looking at a six month project starting on or around the 15th of February. We've chosen this date specifically because the end of the project should then tie in with the school holidays where we envisage we will be at our busiest and we will have around 30 operatives on site each day. The other members of the site team, I'll go through them in a minute, each one has an expanded role within the team and they will explain it themselves in more detail when it's their time to talk. We've got Danny and Chris who are the site managers, Kane who's our logistics manager, Paul and Owl who are our HSEQ managers and before I hand it over to Owl, just have a quick go through the site plan. Site parking, we're looking to park across the other side of the road because we haven't got a large site, so we want to keep the fans and cars down to a minimal. So everyone will be entering the site for a pedestrian entrance and turning straight into the welfare area. There'll be separate machine gates for the storage area, which is to the right of the entrance. Now... Please go hand you over to Owl, who will explain his role within the team. Owl. Thank you very much, Paul, um, for such a beautiful presentation. My name is Owl, as previously introduced. I'm an, uh, the health and safety manager and in charge of security. Um, as you can see from the site setup drawing, um, we've got a um, demarcation on site with a line marked red where we're going to have our welfare facilities stacked up. Um, within that red demarcated uh, mark for welfare facilities, we've got um, one number three by six meter cabin for site office to house um, the project manager, the site engineer, the site supervisor, and the document controller. Also provide within the container um, our Wi-Fi router, 84 and 83 printer file cabins just to house all our files and documentation. Um, we've got a three by six meter cabin for meeting and induction rooms. And within the induction rooms, we've got a um, phase eight and multi-phase rooms, um, including um, 10 person uh, table and chairs for inductions and meetings. Now, for a drying room of three by six meters, two of them equipped with cages for keeping valuables safe to house um, between 50 and 60 workers. And then um, one meter by three meter, uh, one number three meter by six meter cabin for canteen equipped with the following. We've got a workshop with inbuilt kitchen sink, microwave, kettle for uh, preparing tea, portable drinking water dispensers, sitting for 18 to 20 workers. Um, and we provide in paper towels within the canteen. Um, after that, we've got a three meter by three meter cabin, toilet facility for men and women, separate entrances anyway. And within the toilet facility, we might have two number WC cubicles for males, two number wash and basin, two number urinals, paper towels, or mechanical hand dryers. We've got one number 
WC for ladies, one number was on building for ladies, and then the paper towel and or mechanical hand dryers, ladies. And then we've got one number shower room that is unisex, where it could be used by anybody who um, have the need to shower before he leaves the site. Um, please note that we have the capacity to expand the welfare facility as and when the site personnel increases. As we have, we are limited by the size or the uh, the size of our site. Now, with our storage cabins, we have one number three by six meter cabin for our equipment, one number three by three meter cabin for tools, one number one meter by two meter course box, and then one number um, site electric generator set and a diesel bowser. Now, for security, um, we're gonna have um, a gatehouse or a cabin for your security. And then um, on beside that, we're gonna have two number SIA trained security guards on 12, 24 hour rotation, makes it four guards in all. We will have a robotic CCTV kept in place on a consistent motion sensor. Access and egress is um, sensors are manually operated by security guards and um, segregated access and egress for vehicular traffic and pedestrians managed by traffic marshals and security guards. On this note, I will um, hand you over to my colleague, logistics manager Kane, um, to proceed with the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Awo. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kane Trowbridge. I'm in charge of the site logistics and traffic management within the project. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about how we operate regarding traffic management. Firstly, all deliveries are booked in via a, by a um, delivery management system, which is managed by myself and the security. Information such as emissions, load of material, and weight of the vehicle are logged into the DMS prior to booking. Once deliveries are booked and approved, they will arrive at the site entrance met by the security and site banksman. The banksman will safely signal in the driver into a 10 mile per hour limit zone until he's positioned correctly into the loading bay. Segregated from the operatives roaming the site, the loading bay is made up of 20 chapter eight barriers safety precautions. Quick fact, every year 70 people are killed and 2,000 are seriously injured in accidents involving vehicles in and around the workplace. So just take that in mind. If it's safely unloaded, the banksman will direct the driver towards the exit of the site and sent safely away. The delivery is then completed on data management systems. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass you on to my colleague, Chris. Morning, I'm Chris, one of the site managers for this project. I will also be in charge of emergency procedures, first aid and mental health. <clears throat> on this site, everyone will be first aid trained uh, with one day mental health training. I've also been a fire warden for 22 years, along with vast amounts of experience in site management. I will also have a fully trained fire, fire marshal to assist if, if ever an alarm was to sound. Uh, we, will have, we will have fire alarms in every building and outside. Should the alarm sound, I have a duty of care for the safe evacuation of the work occupants, including visitors, ensuring that all areas are being evacuated. The fire marshal will assist me in making regular checks on fire escape routes and fire exits. Fire exits and escape routes will have clear signage. We will make sure everyone leaves in a safe, responsible manner. I will visually search the site to make sure no one is left behind. When everyone is safe at the evacuation point near the entrance of the site, I will then do a roll call to make sure everyone is there. I will deal directly with the emergency services to tell them the location and type of fire. 
we will have fire extinguishers inside and outside where people are working, which will be CO2 black and dry powder blue. Flammables will be kept in a locked container and returned when not in use. There will be a five point fire action notice on fire escape routes and at the fire points near the entrance. Around the site, you will see first aid points. All accidents will be logged and dealt with appropriately. In the canteen, you will see an Health and Safety Workout 1974 poster and again on the entrance of the site. You will see F10 and liability posters. There will be in the canteen. There will be no interaction with public outside the gate during work hours. Upon arrival to, to the site, everyone must do a site induction and may not sign off until fully understood. They must also produce proof of competency, such as CSDS skills card or letter of competency from the employer. Mandatory three point PPA must be worn at all times on site. Random drug testing will be on site and will be on force to keep yourselves and others safe. Site rules must be obeyed at all times. Failure to do so will result in a red or a yellow card, possibly, possibly even a sort of site. These rules can be found in the canteen. Everyone will be familiar with what three words. This is a navigation app uh, which we can use for emergency uh, for, for the emergency services should an incident happen. People on site should sign in on arrival and when leaving, working hours will be 07.30, 16.30. Out of hours, work will be up to the manager's discretion based on regulation and noise. Uh, on that note, I would like to pass you on to Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, good morning. My name is Paul McGuire. I'm the site safe, health and safety manager. My background is a total of 20 years in construction with 10 years on the tools, five years in a supervisory and management role and five years health and safety. I was trained at and graduated from the world famous and world leading Institute of Tony Roy Health and Safety University. We currently have a five year uh, zero lost time accident record, which we fully intend to maintain. Today I'll be covering the following points as you can see on the slide. Plants and equipment, environmental issues, effects on third parties, an overview on the health and safety policy procedures we will be implementing, mental health, and some communication and signage and designs. So plants and equipment, all plant will be certified and monitored as low noise and emission. For example, instead of the beeping reversing sirens, we'll be using the white noise as they're less uh, disruptive to nearby residents and the surrounding area, but they are actually more effective for the operatives to hear and sense which direction the plant is coming from. And all the diesel engines will be modern ones which use lad blue diesel additive, which reduces the um, CO2 emissions and diesel particulates. Uh, talking of diesel, the diesel bowser will be double bunded and in a spill pit to avoid ground contamination. Drip trays will be used under all plant, portable plant and, uh, and also portable generators. Uh, no excavations will be carried out without permits. Uh, where we, part of the permit process, we obviously consult the existing site, serv site survey for the location of existing services. Uh, we'll be using a rotating telehandler for all lifting operations. So we won't be using a crane, so we don't have to be worried about a crane booming close to the power cables that run adjacent to the site. Um, as Chris has stated, all operatives will be uh, competent. That will be through the CSCS, CPCS and MPORS card accreditations. Environmental. As per the ecology survey, there's no protected wildlife on site or in the pond area. That's why we've been able to get planning to fill in half of that pond. Uh, there are, however, some tree, tree protection orders on the, on the trees around that surrounding pond. And as Andy has shown on the um, 
site layout plan. They are going to be fenced off in order to protect those. Any uh, non-protected wildlife that we do discover, we will be relocating uh, if necessary on the farm. And talking of the farm, uh, we'll be recycling any surplus materials. The farmer across the road is very keen to have any spare materials we have for maintenance on his barn, etc. Uh, farmers can always use find a use for materials. I've always found uh, the groundworks will be digging a drainage trench uh, to avoid runoff from site, uh, as required if there's any heavy rain uh, in the summer months, and carbon footprint reduction policy is in place to uh, encourage workers to share vehicles that type of thing and to get deliveries from the shortest distance possible so effects on third parties traffic management plan as Kane's discussed will minimize the disruption so i won't cover that again uh, but we will be using uh, trained banksmen and traffic marshals so uh, at the security shed uh, they will also be operating a jet wash wheel wash system if required so any lorries leaving site won't contaminate the road uh, we'll also use road sweepers as, as required um, signage around sites will have as mentioned uh, notice boards in the canteen and toilets um, promoting all our health and safety initiatives and uh, speed limit sign of 10 mile an hour talking of speed limits we're also looking at getting the um, main road outside reduced to 20 miles an hour as well um, and the big one is uh, a no right turn or exit sign so that all that lorries leaving site comply with Kane's traffic management plan and aren't driving up past the school um, external signs will have a notice board outside with contact details to site management team and also uh, details of the project to keep people informed I think uh, Danny is going to mention as well, we've got an initiative about a letter drop to the residents uh, to keep them informed of what's going on. Uh, regular re letter drops every couple of weeks to keep let them know what's happening. Uh, big one, as Chris mentioned, uh, no interaction with residents. So that's the people who are living on, so on the existing houses on site and kids from the school. So that'll be signposted on the internal side of the exit. So as everybody's leaving, it's a reminder to uh, play nicely and be nice to the neighbours. Um, we'll be offering a window cleaning and car cleaning service if there should in the summer months, if to the existing residents as they've already bought the houses and they're, you know, they're customers of yours, you want to keep them happy. So um, we'll be damping down obviously to reduce the dust, but obviously it's a construction site, there may be some dust. Uh, so if, if any of them, uh, windows or houses getting dirty, we'll, we'll make sure that they're cleaned and they're kept happy. Um, just finally going back to mentioning the school um, we're going to be part of the considerate constructor scheme and so they will actually supply a mascot um, to send into the local school to deliver a, uh, a briefing on the dangers of playing on building sites and as Awal mentioned the site will be secured with 2.4 metre plywood hoarding uh, with observation points so the kids can actually have a look in and see what's going on so hopefully they won't be curious and decide to you know, climb in uh, on the weekend or the summer holidays or whatever to, uh, to have a look. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got for you on health and safety. Um, I'll hand over to Danny, our site manager. Uh, he's going to cover a few other points, including the safe systems of work. Thank you, Paul. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, there's a couple of tasks I'm involved with. Uh, Room tool constructs, one of which is a safe system work document. <clears throat> I've completed and submitted this document, so I won't bore you too much with this. Our safe system work is a part two document covering risk assessment, method statements, <clears throat> cost arrangements, relevant PP, permits to work, and much more, which is, well, it's, it's just been put in place really for his agency workers. So I'm going to move straight on to his uh, mental health policy. So, good, mon good mental health means being general, gen generally able to think, to think, feel, and react in the ways you need to, to live your life. But if you go through a period of bad mental health, you might find ways you're frequently thinking, feeling, and reacting become difficult or even impossible to cope with. Our company policy is to listen, reflect, and engage with our employees. A happy sight is a good sight. 
These problems can come from a wide range, wide range of areas, such as bereavement, family problems, and a really, really common one at the moment, which I think nearly everyone in the country is feeling, is the cost of living crisis. Because this is such a common problem in construction, we have a mental health trained manager on site at all times. The way we try to help, help our employees overcome these problems, uh, we offer a free gym membership to our employees. Sometimes it's nice to finish work and just burn a bit of steel. Get some of, it, some of that energy, just burn it away. We go rambling the last Saturday of every month to try and get people socialising, and get them into God's country. We're part of Boopa men, Mental Health Scheme, a sports scheme. So all of a sudden, there's uh, the direct contact numbers. We all toolbox talks twice a week regarding this aspect because we find that is a lot easier for people to come and, and pull us to the side if you're not happy to do it. You know, just not happy to just go and do it. We're bringing it up and, and let them come to us if they want to. And we've got qualified mental, uh, mental health, uh, qualified first aiders on site. It's important to uh, promote positive mental health within a workplace, but especially the construct construction industry. A negative mental health state can affect the way we think and perform. So it's crucial we ensure all employees are well mentally. As within the construction industry, we have hazards such as working at height, handling machinery, and following strict procedures. These could all be impacted from ill mental health, which puts themselves and others at risk. So I've covered mental health, I want to move on to his notifications and permissions. So we've notified Bramley School about the project. Uh, as the roads may be busier than usual, we'll, uh, it's just a bit of a kind gesture, just to let them know about the project. And they might want to like, look at getting a lollipop lady involved, you know, make the road safer on their end. Residents of the local area have been notified of the project and we've reassured them that uh, this will not affect their usual lives. Local businesses have been notified to help source labour, materials, our equipment and skip hire. So, uh, you've got to look after your local communities. We have notified emergency services. As I mentioned, the roads will be busier than normal. So it might be a route they might want to avoid if there's a faster route. We're on to permissions. So the F10 has been completed, approved, and will be displayed on site. Planning permissions have been submitted and approved. Permit to, uh, to close the payment, uh, as we're going to fix the, the damaged payment, is a good, goodwill gesture. I know it's not part of the, 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 the project, but we are going to do that as a goodwill. So we have got that permit approved by, uh, by the council. Permission has been granted by the factory on the west side, uh, on the, to the west side, of the site entrance for the site car park. Permit from highway control to change the speed limit on school roads to a 20 mile an hour speed limit has been approved. We have permission to land an emergency helicopter. Hopefully this will never, never be needed, but the farm has accepted and gave us permission to land if, if needed. We have received a permit to dig for any excavation works that we'll be doing. Environmental uh, environmental permit uh, has been created and, and uh, there will be more dust than usual. So we've got a permit for environmental permit. So I'm now going to pass you on to Andy uh, and he's going to finish it off. But thank you very much. Right. Hello again. We've left the last part purposely because it's everyone's favourite subject. That's document control. So... The sort of forms that we use as a company, we split them down into daily, weekly and monthly types of forms. Daily forms, it's, a non, it's not an exhaustive list, so there will be others within this. We'll do fencing and welfare checks and any, any issues that are identified will be corrected as soon as possible. We'll do permits to work, which will be filled out by the relevant site supervisor or manager for that part of the job because they are the person who knows what issues there are in that area. And any permits issued will be displayed on a live board so they can be seen 
as as and when anyone comes in. Plant inspections, that sort of thing, they'll be carried out by the relevant contractors. But we do expect all our contractors to hand any health and safety paperwork that they do to us on a Friday afternoon. Inductions will be carried out daily. The forms will then be kept inside a locked box and the inductions will be carried out on a rotor basis by a different site manager every day. Weekly forms, once a week, we will do a site safety and a fire inspection, which will be carried out by a different member of the site team every time. <laughs> the pure inspections and everything like that should be within the contractor's safety management, safety packs that they give us on a weekly basis. Scaffold inspections, they are going to be carried out by the scaffold contractor. And then once a month, we'll have my boss or a senior manager to him will come in doing a safety inspection. We will also have an external auditor. Any rams that are to be used on site, we will need to submit to us prior to weeks prior to starting on site. On site, our filing system be we keep it quite simple because we will not generate a massive amount of paperwork on this job, hopefully. So site file one will contain the construction phase plan with everything involved in that inside it. File two will be your individual contractor files, which will include their policy statement, RAMs, inductions, any inspections or anything else that will be relevant to the work they're doing. File three will be our COSH file. That'll have their material safety data sheets and the locations of any of these COSH items. So we can hand this over to the emergency services in case they have to come on site so they know what they're looking at in each area. And then file four, lastly, will be our safety file, which will contain the RAMs for our agency workers, daily inspections, health and safety inspections, scaffold register, plant register, and every other sort of like bit or piece that's anything to do with that. We do also, as a rule, everything we generate paperwork-wise will be scanned and uploaded to our Dropbox system, which each one of you will have a link to, so you can look at the files anytime you like. Thank you. We would now like to ask uh, if there's any questions, or we'll throw it open to the floor. Thank you. And let's give it a round of applause. Come on, guys. Yes. Yes. <coughs> 27 minutes, two seconds. I'm just like that one in. 27 minutes, two, two seconds. I think perfect timing around the 27 minute mark. I think that's perfect timing. Okay, could I invite the first question then, please? Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, it's, it's open to anyone to answer, really. Um, I've seen that the neighbouring school to the site, which was by, you've made some really good points. Um, one being. The, uh, the actual phase plan, the busiest time being more in the summer when the kids aren't at school, so that's brilliant. Um, is there anything in place procedure-wise for noise whilst the children could be in the school playground? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, that's why we've gone with 2.4 metre plywood hoarding as opposed to just Harris fence. Um, is it also has a doubles up as a noise protection but obviously if anybody's carrying out any noisy works uh that will be we'll use uh sound, sound buffering you harris fencing there's like a green netting you wrap around it it's yeah. a sound attenuation netting is a technical term for it i think um so any noisy works will be also under permit system if it's in that area um but like i say w there's no demolition going on it's all new build um yeah. Yeah, obviously, where we can, we'll site things, uh, anything that's noisy at the other end of site. But like I say, with the 2.4 meter, two meter hoarding, that should... Um, we'll, we'll put a noise level monitor, though. Good point. If you, we'll, we'll put a noise level mon monitor in place. It might, there's money in the budget for these type of things. Um, yes. So, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. It's a good point. We'll put a noise monitor in, and uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated on the results of that. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Um, I have a question. So regarding your uh, site security, so you mentioned about having some form of like a robotic like drone with a motion sensor on it. Um, I just wanted to know where will these uh, be located around the site and how many of them will you have located around the site? Um, I'll do that. Yeah, um, the, 
Sensor cameras will be located at four corners of the site within the site perimeter and then um, one facing the gate. So any intruder, because it's a motion sensor, if there is any intruder, it will be for it's it is connected to two of the site managers on their phone, as well as the um, local police station. So they will be um, they will send a notice that there there's been an intruder. So any of them that gets there first will come and deal with it before it escalates. Okay, and um, Can I just to expand on that from our wall. Yeah. We we are going to get an external security company to set those up, so you know we they will ensure that that system is working with battery backups as well to the cameras. Just for just excellent. Uh, thank you. And just to add on to that, will these uh, motion detectors obviously located around corners of the site? Will they be elevated or will they be like? closer towards the ground um mo if you um are aware of our motion sensor cameras work there are bits that sits on the ground and there are bits that is elevated depending on the nature of the ground and what stage of the work that is it can because it's a motion sensor if it is if it's, if it's a shoulder height it will be able to determine if there is a movement within the site and then it will be activated as and when needed okay and just uh one more to just quickly add on to that um so obviously motion detection you've got a uh, site personnel who may have been inducted walking around the site um how will you prevent the motion detection obviously because you've got people walking around the site it'll constantly be going off and uh going to obviously the site manager's phone so um how will you be able to decipher whether it's actually just people who are allowed on site and people who are not actually allowed on site. Um, um, I made mention of um, SIA trained security guard patrolling the site. Now, they it, during the day and during when people are at work, it is disabled. The security, the physical security guys takes over because it's two of them, one in the gatehouse and then one goes around to check everything that happens on site. Now, when the site is closed and everybody is gone, when we only really have two security personnel, the night shift personnel, that is when the motion sensor is going to be activated. Because uh, two people, I think, is inadequate to um, patrol the whole of the site. So they will know their route and then where they will have to work, and then they will know what they will leave to the motion sensor to pick up and notify them as and when the need arrives. Excellent. Thank you very much, Abel. Got time for one more question if anybody's got one? Yes, please. I have a question and uh, I haven't seen it on the map, but uh, the question is how do you segregate the on site traffic and pedestrian roads? Uh, are they used the same entrance or it will be uh, two separate entrances? Kane, would you like to answer that one? So, during, with the site entrance, you have separated gates uh, for vehicles only. Then you have the security site office, which is located right next to the gates with a separate pedestrian walk-in zone, which is green route. So uh, pedestrians will walk into the site using the green route and uh, any vehicles coming in will be with gates, uh, will be met by, by the gates where the banksman will be as well. So everything segregated, uh, vehicles and pedestrians have their own separate routes. All right, thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. I have a question. Go on then, Peter. Let's have this as the last question. <clears throat> How does white noise work? Have you considered electric machines instead of diesels? Sorry, so I'll... Uh, yeah, yeah. noise work? Right. Um, I went on a course. Uh, white noise uh, is like a <laughs> noise, if you can hear that. And there's a very good video. I can forward you the link, if you like, where it's actually blindfolded and operative. And a general siren, they couldn't sense the direction. Whereas um, with the white noise, it's actually your ears are actually more easy able to pick it up. That's why they've gone for an old-fashioned siren. So that uh, kind of the police use like a, a more like a, a scattery type of noise helps with the location. And the actual decibels are lower. 
So, yeah, you'll find that m most modern dumper trucks are now converting onto white noise emitters as opposed to sirens. Because I'm sure if you were sat in a classroom having a siren going past, uh, every time a dumper reverses or a machine goes past, hearing a siren going off all the time becomes very irritating, whereas white noise is actually a lower decibel and it's actually safer for the operatives because it's uh, more directionally friendly. Oh, thank you. Great response there. Great response. Right, let me just stop the... Uh... The recording so uh, i think we should give that a final round of applause don't you yes yes wow i tell you something guys beginning of the year you never know what you're going to get your first group back and you two guys two groups there have completely smashed it two of the best meetings i've had in a long long time i'm not going to make a joke about the best this year genuinely the best in a long long time